What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to whatever episode this is of my OSCP journey. Now, as many of you may have started to speculate, yes, my exam was coming up. And I sat my exam, um, but something interesting happened. I didn't pass, but I also didn't fail. That's because eight hours into the exam, my internet connection died. Um, for those in Australia, we all know how terrible the NBN has become, and it was just a complete waste of taxpayer money. However, I digress. Uh, due to my fantastic NBN connection, uh, it's been out for the past three days now. I sat my exam three days ago. It died eight hours in. So I've been back and forth emailing Offensive Security and they have they are willing to give me a free exam uh, retake with the fee and lockout period waived. However, a condition of getting that reset was to submit the report of what little I had and that needs to be uh, marked and then I need to schedule a new exam. So all of that is looking like it will be about four weeks anyway. So the whole lockout, it's probably gonna happen anyway. It's gonna be about a one month period before I can take my next attempt anyway. So that's kind of crap. Um, that being said, like, I, I won't lie, the exam was extremely tough. The buffer overflow, simple, done in 45 minutes. But everything else, it was very, very tough. I'm not gonna go into details, but it was hard. Uh, much harder than any of the Hackler Box machines that I've been doing, or much, much harder than any of the OSCP labs that I came across. So I don't know if I would have passed or if I would have failed anyway. It's hard to say. I was progressing slowly, but I may have definitely had enough in me to get over the line. Of course, I only used about half of the time that I was planning to use. So I think it's very reasonable to ex expect that I would have gotten a lot further than I did. So it's hard to know, but at least I have an idea going forward of what the exam will look like um, in terms of difficulty, in terms of how it's structured, uh, in terms of all the process you need to do before you start the exam and how all that kind of plays out. So the worst case scenario, look, I, I've got the nerves out of the way. I was incredibly nervous going into it. I now know the process and next attempt should be pretty straightforward. So as my next attempt is within a month anyway, I'm starting to relax my uh, study life because keeping up this momentum for another month is just simply not sustainable. I can't continue doing 35 hour weeks to 40 hour weeks of study on top of a full time job. Um, so I will be relaxing a bit and knowing a, a little bit more on areas where I need to brush up on. So in terms of my weekly OS, or fortnightly OSCP update videos, I'm probably gonna start changing the content out a little bit soon. Um, I'm going to basically just do vlog style content until the OSCP is done, then go into more uh, time consuming um, videos with a higher production quality uh, doing things like hacking history. So I've got a lot of ideas for that series. So once OSCP is finally done, I can then get into that. So that's basically my story. That's how things have panned out over the past few days. And that's the situation which I'm in. And it's not great. It's really anticlimactic. I really just want to have this done um, because just the amount, the amount of your proper life that you have to put on hold. You know, I haven't been haven't been to the gym in four months, I haven't done yoga, haven't been seeing friends, um, things that I really, really love doing. It's just been dominated by study. So I look like, I think I'm gonna be in a position where I'm gonna start easing that back anyway, even though I haven't passed and just hope for the best. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's my story. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Sorry to, I guess, disappoint any of you who are cheering me on. Um, but we'll get there eventually. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.